Hi friends, welcome. It's November 30th and we're going to stamp and chat today. Um, this is Janie Backer with Inspired Stamping and I'm really glad that you have popped in to join me. So let's get the camera flipped and get this set up on the table. Try and be careful I don't squeeze the wrong buttons and you know if you squeeze the wrong buttons you're going to take a picture or you're going to shut down your camera or who knows what. Welcome. It's the last day of November and I'm so excited to chat and stamp with you today. Um, let me get my computer set up so I can see comments. Really appreciate if you will tap the heart and say hello. Appreciate your support by helping me get Facebook to pay attention to my publication. Okay, today is November 30th and that is important to note because it's the last day of our starter kit special. Our starter kit special is 99 it's usually $99 but during the month of November it's been 75 and I wanted to make sure you know that you can put $125 of product in your kit that you choose which let me put this back over here um, could be our stamp and cut and emboss machine I don't know am I too big too close way too close um, let me make my camera taller Okay, so this is our stamp and cut and emboss machine, and it is remarkable because it folds up. These platforms unfold, and then you can emboss or you can die cut. And if you don't know what that means, then let me give you a quick demonstration um, of what that is. This machine is $120, and so you can select this machine and a pack of dimensionals or a liquid glue and that would put your starter kit order at 124 and boom you're done you're going to pay 75 dollars for this 120 plus four dollars 124 dollars you'll get them for 75 dollars free shipping um, and what a huge savings on this cute machine. It is, let's see, I had an embossing folder right here. Oh, yes, I was going to do this musical one. So let me get a nice big cherry cobbler, or we'll do a real red. That'll be a good one too. So you just lay your cardstock in here and Stampin' Up! has created this line on your embossing folder. So in particular, let me chop this down to the card front length. We want this to be five and a quarter by four. Okay, so with our embossing folders that are unique to Stampin' Up! is that we have this black solid line, which is a guide for you to put your cardstock in, and then your image will be straight. Now, if you want it on diagonal, that's totally fine, um, but a lot of people, like for sheet music, want it to be nice and straight. Um, like you would see in print in a music book. Okay, so I like to steady it with my hand and you can see it's, it, yes, my camera is shaking, but um, it just rolls right through just like that. You always want this hinge to go in first. It is critical for um, 
the wear and tear on your embossing folder that the fold goes in first. So then you open it like this and look at that beautiful embossed texture that you've added to your cardstock. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, just love embossing. Okay, so now we have that part done. So now I'm gonna show you what die cutting is. One of the things I love about our machine is that it has the instructions for all the layers printed right on the platforms. So you know what your die cutting layers are, your embossing layers are, and it's repeated on this um, shim so that you can have success right there. You're not holding a booklet or an instruction manual or pulling up YouTube. It's all sweet and simple right in front of you. Okay, so let me grab our dies. They're over here in my class kit. So I'm going to use, these are the seasonal labels dies, and place this on my cardstock, which I'm going to pull out here. Now you can stamp first and then die cut, or you can die cut and stamp first, and I almost always teach people to stamp first. but. This is my demonstration of how to use a die cutting machine. So you just lay it in there and then you're going to flatten that plat plate right on top and get it started. Oops, back up. It's ide best it's to have it centered in this channel from side to side. And then you just feed it right through. Just like this. So if you've never die cut before, these machines can cut paper, fabric, leather, um, foil paper. You can cut um, lightweight metals. So there's our die label. So again, this machine is $120 and it comes with the platforms that you need for die cutting. And these clear plates, uh, well, I don't have a clear, come completely beautiful, clear, smooth acrylic. Um, I have used mine over and over and over. And so they get cut up and they get um, little nicks and cuts all over them. And it's okay. You just keep using them as is. Um, it's not a problem. And then of course you get these plates as well. So this die cut machine is $120 if you're to buy it full retail. You can put this in your starter kit and it'll only be $75. Now the starter kit allows you to have $125 in the starter kit, which is why I said for $120, you can also add um, a liquid glue. Or you could add, um, a pack of dimensionals. These are $4 items. You can have one or the other. So with one of these combos, you would have a $124 starter kit order and you would pay $75 plus tax. Free shipping is included in a starter kit, which is a $12.5 value. So anyway, I hope that you um, will consider this because it's a great value for for your money um, and we all love to get a good value don't we sales are the name of the game so don't miss out on getting your stamp and cut in the boss machine it is a beauty it has that gorgeous silver logo on each side um, this little handle so portable that you can snap it open and closed wherever you want to go Quick and simple. Okay, so now that I've shared this with you, I'm going to put it away. 
It sits behind me on the rolling cart um, here in my stamp studio. So I just rotate my chair and use it and then rotate my chair back. Okay, so we have some card layers here that we've already prepared. And let's um, put our music the right direction. And it's always a good idea to put your label right back into your envelope so you don't lose pieces. This is again, seasonal label dies. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare our card base and I'm going to use basic white. And I'm going to score it at four and a quarter with my stamp and trimmer and then cut it right down the middle at five and a half. These measurements will always give you two card bases from your standard sheet of cardstock. Give that a little tweak. There we go. Maybe, maybe not. Now you can see more of my mess. Oh, good heavens. That was not my intention. <laughs> okay. Got cords and computers and lights. Oh, I'll be so happy when it can be into my own studio. So we're going to use Holly Jolly Wishes and I want to use Jingle all the way because Jingle Bells is a song and so it's the theme of Jingle All the Way, music, Jingle Bells. Just work with me on it. I like it. And I'm going to mount it on my clear block. That'll go right here. So thank you so much for leaving comments so I know that you're here with me live. Appreciate it. Yes, so if you know anybody who likes to do crafts, you don't have to be a stamper to want a die cutting machine. You could be a teacher. You could be um, any type of craft enjoys a craft uh, die cutting machine. This is our bone folder, so you just get that nice sharp crease in your card base so it's not flying away with little wings flopping. And then we'll repeat with this one. Sure, we'll find a use for it somewhere here. Okay, so we'll use real red ink. Oh, I grabbed the wrong piece. Let me try this again. So I'm just going to tap in my real red ink pad and get everything inked up nicely and I'm going to put it on angle on purpose because this is a red rubber stamp and you can't see through exactly where you're putting it and there we go then put your inky stamp over on your chamois so that it doesn't get ink anywhere else we'll close this up All right, so let's take a peek at what we've got here. It's bare bones, but we're getting closer to a card design. Definitely needs some ribbon. And let's grab something for contrast. So that would be this one. So my favorite trick is to take my adhesive and put a line. Oh, give it a little go. And then tilt it to break it. Then I'll take my ribbon. So I use this as my ribbon positioner. And put the tail that direction. And then loops this direction. it in. 
untwist the curls. Okay, so then we've got loops this direction and a tail going, oops. Loop needs to go to the top. And a loop there. And there's a tail. Okay, so it crisscross, crisscross. See what I did there? Crisscrosses back and forth. And so because I'm crisscrossing in the same exact location on the back here, then you'll want to take a dimensional and since I'm holding the ribbon, I've got one hand. So you're going to put the dimensional to hold on one corner and over there in that corner. And there. So you can see they're strategically placed so that they hold those ribbons. And then I'm going to take my older scissors and cut one in half just to cover up the area where my adhesive is um, exposed so that it doesn't stick tight and flat to the surface on here. Let's use my liquid glue. Now, your embossing is very textured and so you need to really get the glue in a little bit thicker. Remember, really thin by the edges. We don't want it to ooze and be a gooey, sticky mess. So in the middle, you can put it on heavier so it gets into those crevices and holds tight to your card base. Then we'll go ahead and put it in place onto your card front. Now this card was intended to be a demonstration card to show you how embossing works. See, that's still beautiful. And die cutting. So it's quick and simple to use those tools, but you can become way more elaborate if you desire. So we're gonna put that in the middle there. I'm going to grab my red rhinestones and my take a pick tool. And we're going to add rhinestone up there and over there. One here. And that is just quick, simple, super simple, um, because this was intended to show you the techniques. Very cute. Um, it looks a little naked, so I'm going to take my Wink of Stella pen, a little shake, and then I'm going to tap. Well, there we go. Click. Some sparkles on there. Oops. Make sure you hold it steady and don't dab it like Jamie just did. Do you, I don't know if the camera can pick up those sparkles of glitter on there now. It's very subtle but pretty. Um, so I have some really cute... Where'd they go? And polishments here. I must be having one for myself. Yep, I am. Okay, so these are the gingerbread and peppermint acrylic shapes. So let's add a couple of these. I think we just need a little more. What do you think? Do we need a little more detail on here? 
No, I think that's too much. Okay, it was an idea. Some of the process of ideas, it's not quite, quite right. So we'll stick with simple. Um, I wish you could see how much glitter did get on the front of this card. I don't know if that'll pick it up better. Maybe you can see. That's a really nice shimmery, that's why it's, yeah. I think it's still a shimmer glitter pen. So fun. Okay, does anybody have questions? What have you been making? I also wanna work with um, the Eden's Garden today. So let me pull all this beautiful red, white, and Christmas out of the way. Who has decorated for Christmas? Do you have trees up or lights? Did you shop this weekend? I did some shopping and I'm excited. I found some really unexpected fun ideas for gifts. Um, we do a big scavenger hunt where the kids find different um, allotments of cash. And so they can take their cash and go shopping for their own gift as they desire. Um, and that's typically how we handle it. My husband's not a big shopper gift person. And so he likes to give them cash and keep it simple so they can choose what they want. Um, and I have accommodated that preference <laughs> over the years. <laughs> okay, so let's cut our card base. We're going to use the soft succulent and score at five and a half. So this card will go the opposite direction of our previous one. Oh, good job, Rachel. Um, I was informed by my sons that they are not going to bring the Christmas tree in until it's December. So I guess tomorrow I'll, I can start decorating, though I did put a wreath on the door or swag. I have a swag on my door. Okay, fold that in half. So Eden's Garden is an early release. It will be in our next catalog club release in January. It will be our January June mini that um, the Eden's Garden stamps and dies are offered. I'm going to use this DSP for a Christmas card. So let me bring this back. And see about this. Whoa, got paper everywhere. So we're gonna do three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half wide by four inches high. Rachel, did you make all your Christmas cards this year? I know Betsy makes her Christmas cards. Are you all done, Betsy? Are they in the mail? Okay, so then I'm going to take this. Um, I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to cut a four inch piece because it'll be four inches high. Um, and sometimes I don't trust my brain while I'm talking out loud. So to reach five and a quarter, this piece needs to be one and three quarters. Okay, so we're gonna lay these out on the card front here. And grab my scrap of soft succulent with my evening evergreen ink. 
And I think I'm going to pull out a Stamparatus. To stamp this. So this is our Stamparatus for stamping. And our rare earth magnets store in the back. And they just grab it so tight. And I'm going to pick, no, not that one. Well, I want a nice Merry Christmas. Which one? It's the most wonderful time of the year. We'll go with that one. So let's stick it right there. Press my plate down and to grab it. Get some ink on it. It doesn't matter if this is super straight because I'm going to punch around it. So, but I do want the paper to hold in place so that I can get a nice crisp impression. So this allows me to stamp the image more than once, just like that. And you can see how that has, let me get a little bit, nice, rich image. And that's my Evening Evergreen ink. And take my cardstock off. Put this aside so I can clean it. All right. Going to use our postage stamp, rectangle postage stamp punch. And it fits in just right. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere this onto our card base. I was waiting to see if I needed to have another technique for ribbon to wrap around. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just go ahead and line this up. You want your margins, the top, bottom, and left side to be pretty similar as you go around. And then you're going to attach the next one. So slide it. That glue lets you slide, whereas the Double-sided tape just clings, so glue has a little more forgiveness and flexibility. Okay, one of... I need to open this. Our gold shimmer ribbon is going to come back next Christmas in the July, December Oh, goodness sakes. These things are always 10 times harder on camera. <laughs> that was uh, completely unplanned. <laughs> okay, so again, we're going to use the, the technique to put um, stamp and seal plus on the back. And we're going to create a layers of ribbon again that oops, it's that way, crisscross to that side, loop and return. got it just not quite all the way all right got ribbon specks everywhere got 
to do a cleanup. Too much clutter. All right, so now we'll take our dimensionals and adhere them on each corner so that you get ribbon and cardstock edges together. This has to hold it on to the front of your card. You don't want it to just have a strand of ribbon and then come loose and dangle. Oh no, that will not work. You want these to be nice and snug. There we go. So pretty. Now we have, I've hidden them. Oh, I have gems. There they are. So these are the garden gems that are made to coordinate with this paper. And the paper and gems are exclusive for November, December's early release. You cannot buy these in January. They will not be in a catalog. These beautiful paper and gems are only available while supplies last in December. So once they sell out this month, that will be it. So don't, don't wait and think, oh, I'll get them later. That's not gonna happen. Later will come and go. Okay, so these gems are, oh, I know that they're cherry cobbler. And <laughs> is the red color, and then I think that these are soft succulent. So let's go ahead and um, attach them. Just not sure which way to go with them. They're very pretty, but they definitely have a oval direction. So the round ones come in four large, four rows of large and four rows of small. And I think I'm gonna put that one sideways next to time. Hi Carolyn, thanks for popping in today. And then, oh my goodness, this is hard to know where to place these. I think I'll just do a diagonal. Whoops, not on my word. What do you ladies think? So maybe this one should go down lower and get under the adhesive. So the paper, Carolyn, is the Eden's Garden. Um, Ever Eden. It's called Ever Eden Specialty Designers Paper. And it is exclusive this month. And it's 12 sheets in these um, prints that all have gold foil. And it's white, evening evergreen, soft succulent, and beautiful gold foil. And then, let's see, what have I got in the middle here? Let's see if I can flip them over. You can see the back sides are these awesome prints, just very subtle shades of soft succulent, evening evergreen, and white. It's so pretty.
And these gems are so pretty, but um, I'm not used to having this marquee shape to work with. So I'm gonna put one over here. So I have not really pressed these hard. Um, I'm gonna just spread them out a bit. And then put a few more on the card. There we go. So they're just scattered around. Um, Marquee is a whole different shape for me to work with. Um, I like them, they're so pretty. But it's a different way to create a, a layout and a card. Oh boy. So, I hope you like this. This stamp sentiment was from the Holly Dolly Wishes stamp set. It has been my workhorse, horse, workhorse go-to all season. I love the font variety. I love um, the sentiments. These greetings are beautiful and fun and very versatile. So we started out with our first card, which was all about our stamp and cut and emboss machine that you can emboss and you can die cut. Very fun technique, simple card because it was just all about the technique. And then um, this is to share the evening evergreen. Not evening ever. It is to share the gardens Eden. Um, Ever Eden paper and garden gems. And they go with the very stunning which I should have, I just want to make another Christmas card. Eden's Garden Stamps and Dies. Um, we made one of these cards a, a few weeks ago with this beautiful die. So, so anyway, our starter kit promotion um, is still available today. I will post that link here in the next 10 minutes once I finish this video. Um, normally you pay $99. Today's the last day of the promotion to pay $75. And the starter kit is $125 of product you select in your starter kit. There are no obligations when you buy a starter kit and you're on my Inspired Stamping family group, but you don't have to run a business, you don't have to sell product, you don't have to sell catalogs, um, you just get this really great opportunity and then you get a 20% discount on future products if you um, keep your account active. So the whole point of that was to go just to say that for $125 you, can, you select whatever you want. I was sharing that the Stampin' Cut and Boss Machine is 120 all on its own. And then if you add a pack of dimensionals for $4, that right there will put you at $124 for your starter kit. And the promotion for is $75 that you pay for the starter kit. So $125 a product for $75. And free shipping is a really great deal to get this awesome machine um, at such a huge discount. So I will post those links and um, product code codes right after this. Sorry, I bumped into my trash can. Um, and if you'd like to join my Inspired Stamping team, I'd love to have you join us. Um, I have people all over the country as well as um, here locally, so it doesn't matter where you live. You're always welcome to join us. And um, yeah. Oh, okay, you got it. Well, nice, Carolyn. That's great that Laura got you set up and that you already have a demonstrator. That's good to know. Oh, Brenda, well, it's not too late to get this stamp set. It is, it's 
a super duper one. I love it. Such a good stamp set. I think um, it's one that you would use for years and years because there's so much versatility to it and the the fonts are timeless over the decades. They're not um, just trendy now. They're great. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for stamping with me today, and I appreciate that you joined me. Please click on the heart for today's video. Um, and if you're watching this on replay or through YouTube as a replay, then please leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up or a heart. Okay, everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.